like to talk to you about the intersection between artificial intelligence and sustainability. And let me start by introducing myself. My name is Patricia Gestoso and I wear three hats. The first one, I'm Global Director of Scientific Services for a large uh, software development company of um, uh, engineering and scientific software. My background is chemical engineering and computational chemistry. I'm also an inclusion strategist since 20 had multiple initiatives uh, to uh, improve diversity and inclusion in tech and th that were actually recognized in 2020 with the Women in Tech Changemakers UK Award. And um, recently I've opened, uh, I've uh, started my own consultancy where I help leaders to uh, leverage diversity into their business strategy so they can move from fear and compliance to uh, is an opportunity and uh, they can use diversity to reach to untap markets, boost innovation and attract and retain talent. And my third hat is as head of diversity, equity and inclusion and we are an AI. We are a non, uh, British nonprofit that uh, uh, want to uh, further uh, the awareness about the benefits and challenges of AI for the broad pop population. We, among the, the, our achievements, there is, we have put together a race and AI toolkit, uh, which uh, I lead uh, the uh, branches of justice and health. And we lately, we launched a new program called Better Images of AI, where we want to challenge the images of robots and blue brains we see all over. And we are putting together a free repository of new images crea created by us. So let, before we start, let's uh, ag uh, agree on some terms related to artificial intelligence. And the first one is, what is artificial intelligence? We can define it as computer systems that can perform tasks that were formerly executed only by humans. Like, for example, the, uh, the home assistants like Alexa, with whom we exchange, you know, we talk and we ask information to. We, another term that we use a lot is machine learning. What is machine learning? Uh, uh, is computer systems that interactively identify patterns in data to make predictions or determinations. And a good example is the difference between a map and a GPS or a sat nav. If I live in Manchester, if I want to go to a Stockport, a paper map is going to give me certain distance and certain time. Whereas using a GPS, a sat nav, then I can have a more accurate uh, time of arrival because it takes into account uh, current data, but also data is, is using the prediction for that prediction previous data to reach the, the, uh, that distance between Manchester and Stockholm. Other artific artificial in intelligent technique is computer vision that actually looks into the ability of machines to process and gain insights from visual data. For example, if we have tons of tons of photos that in where we have a banana and they are tagged as banana, uh, we can use computer vision so to check new images for the absence or the existence of bananas. And then we have as well automated speech recognition and natural language processing that actually look into processing a sp uh, a speech to text, text to understand meaning and so on. And it's what is used, for example, when we, Google, we ask Google to translate from one language to the other, or again, we ask Google to, for a term, but we use our voice rather than uh, typing it into the window. So what this has, uh, so uh, those uh, different techniques are, you know, is, this list is not exhaustive. Uh, for example, we have robotics and so on, but they come across in uh, often when we talk about artificial intelligence and you, we will see that depending on the technology, you know, we can have 
one, two, three, or even more uh, towards building the solution. So what this has to do with sustainability and you know, the 17 sustainable development goals, actually it has to do a lot because uh, artificial intelligence can help us to learn from the past, from all the data that we have gathered, for example, even during centuries, and use them to predict future trends. Also, it can help us to uh, play what if scenarios and for example some of you may be uh, you know aware that for example we have done calculations based on our consumption and our emissions of co2 about how the temperature of the planet would change in uh, for 2013 and 2015 and all of that part of those calculations involve artificial intelligence so let's just to give you a couple of examples, a more uh, more tangible. Uh, we have AI for climate change uh, that we are actually using artificial intelligence, for example, machine learning for disaster prediction, for precision agriculture, for manage better managing forests, to uh, for CO two removal and sequestering, uh, for improving vehicle efficiency and even, uh, you know, new forms of uh, transport like self-driving uh, cars and also to optimize buildings and cities like, for example, when uh, we look at the smart cities. Another very important area where AI can bring value is in healthcare, as some of you may be aware during the COVID-19 pandemic. We, you know, uh, AI, AI uh, methodologies have been successfully used to uh, help in the prediction and diagnosis of a disease, to accelerate the drug discovery and development, also uh, explore health monitoring devices. For example, there are there is a startup building using AI to uh, build an artificial pancreas, and even for resource management, for example, in hospitals, to try to pair, to do a better pairing between patients and doctors. So imagine the potential for good, for benefit is enormous, but this is only part of it because there is a cost of uh, AI, you know, for the planet, for the humans, and also what we will see is that not, although there are benefits of AI, not necessarily the, uh, everybody benefits. Actually, some, some people benefit less and even some of them get harmed because of it. So uh, let's start with the sustainability of AI, uh, the cost of AI for our planet. And for that, we need to uh, step away from, you know, the cloud, the transparent um, uh, screens, and realize that all that is, is built on data centers and servers that are physical, that they consume a lot of electricity, that they need water for cooling, and also that they generate a lot of uh, CO2 emissions. And not only that, also when we talk about AI, we are also talking about, you know, CPU, GPU time uh, during the algorithm development and deployment because in AI, as we get more, uh, although, you know, the algorithms are in production, they still are gathering data and the process is not there, it's always refined and that again is a is, uh, is a process. And of course, all those physical data centers, servers, screen have a, a finite limited, uh, 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 a finite life, and then we generate a waste that unfortunately, a lot of cases goes to uh, countries uh, that, uh, you know, uh, are uh, developing countries that not necessarily get the benefit of AI. So we talk a lot about the impact of AI in people about uh, losing jobs, but there is also the creation of 
a lot of jobs because of AI, although they are not necessarily high quality jobs. And here I'm, I'll uh, briefly touch in two kinds, one are the annotators and another the content moderators. Annotators, for example, in South America, in countries like Venezuela, where I lived in the past, um, are paid less than $1 an hour to annot annotate. Uh, images. Annotate means that they look at images and they look at all the objects in the image and they tag them. And uh, the people that develop, the, the companies that develop self-driving uh, self cars, for example, they get all those images that have been annotated and they use them to build algorithms that are able to check when, you know, the, the car is driving to understand that you know, that blob is a drop of, of rain, whereas that blob is a human and that one is a key, is a cat or a, a tree. Okay, so these people are fundamental to the development of the self-driving cars, but they are not getting the benefits, you know, of the huge paychecks. Other group uh, impacted, you know, with low quality jobs are the content moderators, again, for example, in Africa, that get paid, you know, maybe $1.5 the hour. And what they do is, again, bridging the gap between what the AI does and really, um, you know, the limitations, you know, where moderating, con uh, you know, videos and posts, and they and basically they spend the time the, the, their job is to spend uh, to, to look at flagged videos and um, and uh, images that sometimes contain you know rape murders uh, porno, uh, pornographic content and parse it and see you know what needs to be removed or not again paid 1.5 dollars the hour and there is the other side about who benefits. And this is what we look at ethical AI. And the problem why we need to look at this closely is because our assumptions around technology that are built on how we handle technology different than, for example, other organizations like food or you know, other industries like healthcare. We assume that technology is neutral. We also believe that data is objective or that algorithms are unbiased because they are mathematics. But actually, the reality is that in AI, there is a power in asymmetry because the developers of, you know, people, us working for companies that develop AI have more power than the users or the planet that are, you know, uh, using or are benefiting or not of, uh, of the technology. So let me uh, give you a couple, uh, uh, you know, three examples to show you that actually those assumptions don't, uh, uh, don't hold true. So the first one is about uh, e-commerce. And here we see a graphic of the data and prediction of UK e-commerce in 2018. As you see here, uh, you know, from 26 to 2020, uh, e-commerce was growing in the UK and, you know, the prediction was it will continue to grow in 2021. However, COVID hit and as a lot of you may know, suddenly we had a big peak on e-commerce that didn't match the prediction. And this is because uh, AI is, not, is good about predicting the future based on the past, but when things change, they are, uh, AI is not good at, at adapting. The next is an example on healthcare. Last year, Google released their Google Dermatology Assistant app, uh, which, in theory was a great tool you know basically you just needed to have three photos or of a skin nail or hair condition give it to the app and the app was able to tell you uh, to suggest if you have one of 20 uh, uh, 288 conditions looks great however when derma uh, dermatology experts look at the data that was used 
what they realize is that even if they have a lot of data, we are talking about 40,000 images and 12,000 uh, 12, patients, actually, uh, if we look at the color of their skin, 90% were of fair skin, light skin. So as you can imagine here, there was, you know, you can judge that the quality, the performance is not gonna be the same when you use the app if you have fair skin than if you have brown or dark skin, okay? Even if the technology is the same. And the third example uh, we, uh, that, uh, that show us, you know, that the ethical issues around AI is that marketing and sales of certain pro pro AI products have done a rather unethical um, um, approach to show the value of those apps. Basically, what they have done is automate the snake oil. So, for example, we have apps now that they promise us that their AI is able to just check a photo and tell us the sex prefer uh, preferences of the person, or that they can tell us if you know, a child is angry, disappointed, or sad just by looking at the photo. A third one, we even have a HR um, apps that say that just by analyzing one minute of a candidate, uh, they are able to tell something that so complex as personality. So as you see here, AI is actually used to sell you know, a capability that doesn't have any scientific basis whatsoever. So the good news is that winter is coming. There is regulation, both at the level of data and at the level of AI that is, that is being discussed and rolled out in both EU and also in uh, the US. Some of you may uh, be aware of uh, GDPR, as well as the California Conf Consumer Privacy Act. And for AI, there is also in this, uh, you know, since 2020, there are uh, se um, uh, se uh, several regulations. However, that is not enough because there is a huge gap in time between our current status and actually the, the, uh, the, the, uh, um, when the regulation appears. So we do need as an organization to understand that not because we want to be ethical, that means that it's gonna happen. We need to bridge the gap between intent and impact. And how we do that? we need to embrace sustainable artificial intelligence as a practice. That is at all points of the development. That means from ideation to user research, co-creation, testing, and of course, deployment, but also sales, marketing, and services. At each step, we need to interrogate, you know, the value we get, who gets the benefits, and who actually gets the harms. So, I'm asking you to do two things. First, learn on your own. You have already been in this, in, in this talk and I hope you share uh, what you learn with your colleagues. And also please do visit us for uh, completely free at We and AI and look at our Race and AI toolkit. The other way is actually be proactive questioning new technology. We have this impression that just because it's, it's technology, it means progress. It, it, it's not necessarily one-to-one -one relationship. So when you are presented with a new technology, ask questions. For example, why not a more transparent, simpler technology can do, cannot do the job? Second, who is creating that technology? How that HR uh, R&D team looks like. Third, how the performance of the AI system is monitored in time, um, um, then how much this technology consumes. So look, takeaways, look at ben both benefits and challenges of AI. Regulation is coming. We need to embrace sustainable AI as a practice. Um, action for you, learn and question. 
I love for you. Uh, I love to continue this conversation. Please do reach out to me. This in the Q. This is the Q, the QR. Uh, and, you know, if you take a, a photo of, of the QR code, you will also find a survey. I'm writing a book about how women succeed in, in tech, and I love to have your feedback. Thank you so much, and uh, I uh, wish you a fantastic day. Thank you very much.